Here's our project for today, guys. We got a six ton train unit that uh, was not cooling properly last night. One of my guys was here late last night and they uh, talked to me about it over the phone a little bit. The restaurant downstairs was at 81 degrees. The thermostat was set to 71 degrees. So over the phone, we had determined that the economizer was calling for free cooling, even though at the time it was about 90 degrees out. So we went through a little bit of troubleshooting over the phone, but there wasn't much we could do over the phone. It was getting late. Uh, so we ended up just unplugging the economizer and just letting it run in mechanical cooling for now. So what I'm gonna to do today is I'm gonna plug the economizer back in and we're gonna see if it kicks right back into free cooling. Now right now you can, if that'll pick it up on camera, we're at 93 degrees right now. So obviously there should be no need for free cooling. So we're gonna go over here. Now this is our incoming power to our economizer. Plug back in. And my compressor just shut off. You can see our return is closing down. Our economizer is opening up. Let's get right over here. There should be a green light on there that's right down there in the bottom corner. That green light, when it's steady, the economizer believes it's okay to economize. So we're gonna let that go for a little bit and see what it's gonna do. My economizer hasn't opened up. My return started to go down, it started to close up, but then it went back up. So, Let's just see what happens here. Yeah, there goes our... Now our return's closing down. Now it's going back up. Now it's going back down. Now it's stopped. It's going down. seems to be going down in steps for some reason. Usually, from my experience, when these economizers close, they just go down in one fluid motion instead of an inch or two and then close down a little bit more. So that seems odd to me. We'll have to check out the hardware on that economizer damper just to make sure it's not getting hung up on anything. So my next step is to bust out the manual and go through and troubleshoot this economizer. Now I am not real sure where the enthalpy sensor is on this particular unit. It's probably underneath the hood over by those uh, mesh screens, uh, the, um, the metal filters that are in the economizer. So we'll check out the wiring on the enthalpy sensor. I'll get out the manual. We'll do some uh, resistance checking to see if that enthalpy sensor is still good. All right. So, let's get to work. All right, let me take you through a little bit of my thinking process here. So the first thing we do, this is one of the manuals I pulled out of the control panel of the unit. First thing we need to do right up here, is we need to check our nameplate and see if the ninth digit is a R or an E. So we go over here, and let's see, right there. So it's an R. So of course that means we have the Reliatel control. So we need to find the section Reliatel control cooling with, not without, with an economizer, which is right over here. Um, so I've already read through this essentially what it's it's saying is make sure your potentiometer is, is set to uh, what you want it to be, which I have it set to E for 55 degree outside air. That's when it kicks into free cooling. 
Uh, the other thing I noticed in here that's important is um, it basically has to run for about five minutes to allow the mixed air sensor to determine if the air that it's bringing in through the economizer mixed with the return air is going to be enough to satisfy the, um, the zone sensor. So, part of me is wondering now if when we were on site last night, if we just didn't allow it to run long enough. Uh, for example, if I got up here and I shut the unit off, pulled some panels, and then I turned the unit back on, according to what I'm understanding here, it should run in economizer mode for about five minutes until that mixed air sensor says we're not satisfying the zone sensor with the air that we're bringing from the outside because it's too warm. That's what I understand from it. So what I was hoping to be able to do is, at the very least, ohm out my sensors. There's my my return air humidity sensor and our mixed air sensor. There's an outside air humidity sensor. Um, but in this chart for the Reliatel control, there is no temperature resistance chart. Now there is a temperature resistance chart if you have the electromechanical control. See right over here is our electrical me mechanical control section. Now we don't have that, so it apparently doesn't apply to us. So let's just ignore all that. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to turn the unit back on and I'm going to let it run for about five minutes and see if maybe we just jump the gun at first. And then I'm probably going to have to call tech support and see if they can give me some documentation about how to check these sensors throughout this machine. All right, let me power it back on. I'm going to turn my timer on and see what happens after five minutes. All right, guys. Well, my test it did not go as well as I wanted it to. We're approaching the eight minute mark since I've let the unit run. I was hoping that after the five minute mark that the manual said, the mixed air sensor would make the determination that it will not satisfy the zone temperature set point with um, the current air that it's bringing it through the, through the economizer. However, that has not happened and we're going on eight, nine minutes now. So we still have a problem with our economizer. One of those sensors I'm sure is, is off, but uh, as I showed you, there's nothing in the manual that really explains how to test those sensors on the Reliatel control. So I'm gonna do some research online, see if I can download the manual, um, and then I'll probably reach out to tech support, see if there's a a way an easy way to check those sensors all right i'll let you know what i find out i just got off the phone with train tech support i was not able to find the answers i was looking for on any online forum i was able to download a couple different manuals about this economizer and the unit itself and how to troubleshoot it but there wasn't a whole lot of information on how to exactly test all of these sensors so you'll notice that uh, now I only have one sensor hooked up and that is my mixed air temperature sensor. After my conversation with Train, what I found out, what I learned today is that this setup, the way they had this set up with our outdoor humidity sensor, our mixed air humidity, or excuse me, our return air humidity sensor, and uh, the other one, which is I believe return air temperature sensor. Um, this unit was set up for something called comparative enthalpy. So it really doesn't care what the outside air temperature is, the dry bulb ambient air temperature. It will economize based solely on the relative humidity of the air. So today is a pretty dry, dry day. I, I don't know what the uh, exact humidity percentage is out here, but uh, it's about 98 degrees in the shade. Um, but it's a very dry day out, so the economizer is looking at the humidity of the outside air versus the humidity of the inside air, and it says, well, the outside air is drier than the inside air, so that's why it was going into full economizer mode. So basically, by unplugging the humidity sensors, 
what we did was we turned this from a comparative enthalpy economizer into a dry bulb um, economizer, or I guess what I would call a normal economizer. Um, but I thought that was pretty neat. I, I very rarely get to work on train economizers. This is probably the second one all year I've even seen. Uh, the first one I've actually been able to uh, really play around with. While we're waiting for that unit, which I was just working on, to cool down so I can record a supply temperature, I came over to the twin to this unit just so I could show you exactly what tech support had me do to change this from a comparative enthalpy sensing economizer to a dry bulb economizer. Um, first thing we did is we took our enthalpy set point and we set it to E so it will go into free cooling at 55 degrees. Then we removed our outdoor air humidity sensor, our return air humidity sensor, and our return air temperature sensor. It's that simple. We are now in uh, we are now set up to uh, economize based solely on the dry bulb temperature. Nothing to do with humidity. All right, guys, that does it for today's video. Hope you enjoyed it. Just a quick little video about economizers. Uh, like I said, I have very rarely gotten a chance to work on train economizers, so it was good learning experience for me, and I figured that maybe somebody else out there could uh, benefit from it. All right, so. Hope you enjoyed it today, guys. Thanks for watching. I really, really do appreciate it. Click that like button for me if you get a second. Hit the subscribe one while you're at it as well. And uh, go ahead and share some videos on Facebook. It's all right. I'm not mad at you if you do. All right? So for now, guys, that's it. We'll see you on the next one, all right?